think of anything? No, you? No, I can't think of anything. Me neither. What, what, what about... Uh, ah, no, it uh, stinks. Mary, you can't get an idea by being negative. Let's try being positive. Who knows, maybe your idea will be terrific. Okay. What about a documentary on women's changing role? That stinks. I know. <laughs> Crazy. We finally get the money to do a documentary and we can't even think of one. All right, I'll tell you what, sit down. I'll just throw out a lot of ideas really fast. You know, just anything to get us thinking. Doesn't have to be good, just anything. Move us into the fresh areas, just real fast, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it'd be better if we went slow. <laughs> magazine articles out a little while ago. Why don't we look through them? Maybe we'll get an idea. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Hi, Bill. New dress. You like it? Oh, very much. Lou, huh? you like it? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I saw it on the rack and I thought, oh, but it's so glamorous. Do I dare to wear something this glamorous? I mean, I'm not a model or anything. It's the very idea. I mean, me, a model? <laughs> me, <laughs> a model? <laughs> what I'm saying is, I am too plain to ever be a model under any circumstances, whatsoever. <laughs> Well, no, Phil, you could maybe be a model, I don't know. Oh, Mary, you're just saying that. Phyllis, we're working here. What do you want? Well, the ballet opens tonight, and I was wondering if I could possibly borrow some earrings. Well, I don't have any. <laughs> Everything I have, I'm absolutely desperate. All right, all right, just a minute. They're dancing Coppelia tonight. Mm. Such a beautiful ballet. As the curtain opens, the bell ringers alight, quickly followed by wildflowers. Phyllis, we are working here. We are working. We are looking for an idea for a documentary. Oh, I have one. Yeah? What about the rising public interest in the supernatural? Hey, you know, Mr. Grant, that's not a bad idea. What do you think? No, that's not too bad. That could be pretty interesting. Oh, thank you. Mary, great. Uh-huh. Don't you have anything a little nicer? Well, never mind. My hair will help cover them. Anyway, Mike has never seen them. Mike? Uh-huh. Mike. The guy I go out with. I need them to be nice and tight for when I... Toss my head back in that way I have. <laughs> Why? Phil, what, what do you mean the guy you go out with? I mean, I mean, does... Oh, I, I guess I should explain. As you know, Lars and I have this perfect marriage based on mutual respect and esteem. There's just one problem. When it comes to culture, Lars is a pinhead. <laughs> So I've got myself a companion. Really bright, interesting guy. He and I go to the ballet, concerts, and museums together. Lars, of course, totally approves. I see. I, uh, I know it's a daring new concept, the idea that a man and woman can be just friends. But I've always been a pioneer. <laughs> if you'll remember, Mary, Lars and I had the first water pick in the building. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, I was oh, looking... Oh, Mike! Oh, hi, Phyllis. Lars told me you were up here. Oh, Mike, this is my friend Mary Richards. Mike Hello. Tedesca. Mary, you hi. Come in, please. Do we have time to sit and chat? Yeah, sure, we got time. Oh. Lou? Huh? This is Mike Tedesca, Lou Grant. Oh, hi, Mike. Lou? So, you like the ballet, huh? I certainly do. Yeah, I've never been myself. Well, you should go. Yeah, I've been meaning to. <laughs> well, I mean, there's something really beautiful about the way they move. Mm. The timing, the coordination, it's... It's like watching a double play from Reese to Robinson to Hodges. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was some team. Billy Cox the third. For real on right. Ah! <laughs> Isn't it wonderful how Mike manages to relate to everyone at his own level? <laughs> Well, 
I think we should be going. We don't want to be late for Coppelia. Right. Well, uh, it was nice meeting you both. Yeah, same Thank here. You. Good meeting you. I uh, say, Phyllis, thanks for that idea on the supernatural. Oh, yeah, it should make a great documentary. Yeah. I know. When Channel 4 did it last week, it was wonderful. <laughs> like a terrific guy. Oh, I don't mean it that way, Murray. I mean, he just wasn't what I expected, you know? I mean, he really was terrific. Phyllis going out with another man? Why, that's disgusting. <laughs> a married woman playing around behind her husband's back? Oh, that's just disgusting. Yeah, man, it's not what you think. Mike isn't interested in Phyllis for that sort of thing. Oh, I get it. You mean the guy's a little... <laughs> I mean, the man is not. Not what? I mean, you and I are talking about the same thing, aren't we? Yes, yes, we're talking about the same thing, and he's not. Oh, oh hi. hi. I uh, had an appointment on the 19th floor, and I figured, uh, what's four floors between friends? Huh? <laughs> hi, Lou. Hi, Mike. How are you? How are you doing? Um, Mike, I'd like you to meet Murray Slaughter and Ted Baxter. This is Mike Tedesco. Hello, Mike. Nice to meet you. Oh. Oh, Mike, hello. Hello. So, how was the ballet? Oh, it was great, just great. Ballet, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what, what, what role do you play? Uh, Ted, Mike isn't in the ballet. Mike went to the ballet. Oh, well, either way, it's all right with me. <laughs> and I've never cared what a guy's race, uh, religion, or sex is. <laughs> in black or white, Jew or Gentile, AM or FM. <laughs> I mean, what the heck, we're just all people. Some of us are. <laughs> Come on, Murray, it's your turn not to think of an idea for a documentary. Good seeing you, Mike. Nice yeah, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Well, hello. Hello. I lied. I didn't have an appointment on the 19th floor. Oh? Nope, it was on the 11th floor, but, uh, well, you know, uh, four floors is one thing, but going 12 floors for someone else, that's a commitment. <laughs> so, how was the uh, ballet last night? Uh, I asked you that, didn't I? Yeah, listen, uh, this old friend of mine, a guy named Angie I grew up with in New York, I've never forgotten his mother's cooking. Well, by some wild chance, she's come out here. Mrs. Biamonte, his mother, has opened up a restaurant. I went there a couple of nights ago, and Mary, it has, without a doubt, the worst food in the world. <laughs> so the point is, Mary, um, how would you like to have dinner with me someplace else? Uh, oh. <laughs> well, uh, Mike, I'd love to, but the thing is, I'm just uh, so very busy here. You know, just, uh, well, I know it doesn't look busy here. You know, but, uh, mm. Underneath, uh, where it's really very busy, it's just, uh, well, so much work, I can't even think about it. <laughs> Well, look, if you, you know, should suddenly find yourself free, uh, why don't you call me? I'll give you my number. Good, good, good. And uh, if you should lose this paper, don't worry, I'm in the book. Okay. And if you should lose the book, don't worry, I'll call you. Uh, Mike, thanks for stopping by. I, uh, well, just, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, so long. So long. Well, he seemed like a nice guy. Here he is. He just asked me out. Oh? Of course, I said no. I mean, he's Phyllis's friend. Well, Phyllis's platonic friend, you know, but still, I... Uh, <clears throat> well, um, I'll be in editing if you... Okay. That guy asked Mary out, huh? Yeah. I just hope he's not trying to use her to get to me. <laughs> My mommy propped me up in bed, bring me a lot of magazines and ice cream. And now you brought me magazines and ice cream. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. I got vanilla. Thank you, Bobby. I love vanilla. <laughs> Whenever I loved something, I'd say, I love it. 
<laughs> but not just with vanilla. Whenever I liked something, I'd say I rubbed it. <laughs> like I, I rub candy. Uh, I rub licorice. I rub daddy. I rub mommy. Phyllis, you're making I... me nauseous. <laughs> you need prescriptions, no, medicine, anything no, like Mary. that? No, Mary. That's probably Mike. Uh, Mike? Come in, Mike! Hey, hi, Mary. Hello. Phyllis. Oh, hi, Mike. I, I tried to call you at the office, but you were gone. I got the thibbles. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Poor thing. I hate to have you miss the rig of the Nibelunga just because Dub E caught a Dub Jerv. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you take Mary? Oh, no, no. Yeah, you know, I was just about to suggest the same thing uh, myself. No, thank you. Well, Mary, why not? please, I'll feel terrible if you don't go. Well, okay. Well, good, good. <laughs> hey, come on, we better go. I know these Wagnerian operas. They don't seat anybody during the last six hours. Yeah. <laughs> Phyllis, I hope you feel better. Thank you. Mary, could I see you for a second? Yeah, sure. Uh, Look, I'll bring the car around front, okay? Okay. Mary, mm -hmm. could you bring me back something after the opera? <gasps> sure, Phil, what do you want? Mike. <laughs> You know when she'll be back? Uh-huh. No, no, that's all right. Just uh, tell her I called. Bye-bye. No, 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 no. Well, that's don't, all right. Don't, don't get up, Mary. No, no, don't, don't get up. Uh, Rhoda lives in New York, doesn't she? Uh, yeah, Mr. Van, she does. Mary, why are you making all these long-distance calls? Well, Mr. Van, it's just that sometimes things happen in my life, and I need to talk to Rhoda. I need her advice. Well, uh, why don't you use me? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grant, I'm, I'm sorry to laugh. It's just, <laughs> it's the last thing in the world I would talk to you about. Oh, no, no, no. No, don't get up. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> the last thing in the world you talk to me about. I'm your friend, right? Right. And you're always talking to me about why don't I break away from this thing about uh, men are only good for some things and women are only good for other things. I mean... Why does a woman have to feel she can only confide in a woman? Why can't she confide in a man just as well? Okay, all right, Mr. Grant. I'm going to give it a try. Right. I think I'm going to be sorry, but I'll give it a try. Hey, Lou, uh, you want to go to lunch? I can. Mary's going to confide in me. <laughs> oh, yeah? What's the trouble? <laughs> I usually don't talk to men about. But I knocked the pegs out from under her, and now she's got it. <laughs> well, you know this guy, Mike, who came to the news? <laughs> from the friend of Phyllis. Right, right, right. Well, he and I have gone out about four or five times in the last couple of weeks, and I'm beginning to feel a little funny about it, you know? I mean, he's Phyllis's friend. Well, how serious is it between you and Mike? Oh, no, it's not serious at all. I mean, no, we're just friends. <laughs> You mean he's never made a pass at you? No. Oh, maybe Ted was right about that. <laughs> now I know why women never confide in men. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> Sit down, Mary. Please. Now, I've been listening outside that door in silence. <laughs> long enough. And do you seriously believe that a guy and a chick can go out five times together and nothing happens. I mean, do you? When it goes against nature. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, and uh, the man upstairs decreed that there would be two kinds of people in this world, male and female, and he did it for a reason. <laughs> now, some people are squeamish about saying what that reason is, but I'm not afraid. I'll come right out and say it. The reason is that's the X. <laughs> That's why he made men and women different from each other. He wanted them to have S-E-X. If he didn't want them to have S-E-X, he would have made us all the same. That way, there would have been just one kind of person in this world. Flat, all over. <laughs> I'm 
sorry. Don't you just hate people who borrow things and never return them? Which reminds me, how's Mike? <laughs> it's fine. Oh, good, good. Mary, you want to hear something funny? This will really amuse you. Remember when you told me yesterday that you and Mike were going to that concert? Mm -hmm. Well, when I pictured you and Mike at the concert, swaying to the seductive strains of Mahler's kinder totem leader. <laughs> well, I actually felt a little pang of jealousy. <laughs> Is that hysterical? <laughs> hey, Phil, you know, if you're upset because Mike and I are seeing upset. each other... Upset, Mary, I'm... Mary, you dear, funny, sweet, loony Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted that you and Mike are hitting it off so well. Oh, Mary, I wanted to ask you, are you doing anything later? Yeah, I'm going out with Mike. Oh, okay. Some other time. Okay. Isn't that funny? I just felt that same pang again. <laughs> it's the most amusing phenomenon. One minute you're having this, this civilized discussion with your dearest friend, and suddenly you have a primitive urge to see her covered with honey and tied to an anthill. <laughs> Of course, I would never ask you to stop seeing him. I would never ask you to. Never, never, never. Phyllis, if you want to talk about this, I'll be glad to talk about it with you, but not as long as you're acting this way. Acting? Acting how, my dear? Phil, <laughs> come on. For once in your life, will you say what you mean? Will you just talk plain? Okay, cutie. <laughs> You want plain? I'm going to give you plain. That dude isn't going to be interested in a cultural evening with a happily married housewife when he's got Action City, USA. <laughs> Phyllis, if that's what's bothering you, let me put your mind at rest. My relationship with Mike is totally platonic. I mean, totally. Well, it's none of my business. But I must say, I am surprised. Because even though he knows I'm married, off limits. They're voting. No parking here. <laughs> He's been so, so steamed up, I was afraid I was going to have to hose him down. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> Not really. Isn't that pathetic? <laughs> How sad it is that I have to make up these pathetic little lies to... Make it sound like men find me irresistible. <laughs> oh, Phil, come on. Mike obviously enjoyed going out with you. Well, I hope you're right, Mary. Because these last few weeks have been so important to me to have someone to dress up for. Oh, I know I could dress up for Lars, but somehow it seems silly to put on your best ensemble for a man who's walking around the house with a sweatshirt that says I'd rather be sailing. <laughs> and I know how you feel. You don't have anything to worry about. Mike and I are not involved. Oh, Mary, that makes me feel so much better. You were right, Mary. We should always be honest with each other. Mm -hmm. Let's really be honest. You know that stupid thing women have about telling their ages? Let's tell. I'm 34. Well, apparently it's easy for you. <laughs> But uh, now I'm going to tell you my age for the first time. And it isn't easy. I am 43 years old. That's right, Mary, 43. Aren't you going to say something? Boy, are you old. <laughs> Uh, Mary, would you mind very much if we didn't go to a movie tonight? No, 
No, to tell you the truth, <laughs> I think if I see one more French film about a sensitive schoolboy who learns all about life from a voluptuous yet sensitive older woman. Who's his mother? <laughs> right. <laughs> would you like a drink? No, I don't think so. Well, Mary, would you mind very much if I broke our date this evening? Uh, no. But look, something's come up and I don't have much time. Can we talk? Yeah, sure. Look, we've gone out um, four or five times, right? Right. You've probably wondered why I haven't tried anything. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, I have. <laughs> well, look, I used to go with this girl named Sharon. As a matter of fact, well, we lived together for about three years. You never tried anything with her either? <laughs> <laughs> look, anyway, uh, we broke up about a month ago. That's when I started going out with Phyllis. I had hoped it would sort of take my mind over things, but... Mary, it hasn't worked. I've been pretty unhappy without Sharon. And as it turns out, Sharon's been pretty unhappy without me. And, <laughs> well, so we're going to get married. Oh, Mike. Hey, that's wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> Have you told Phyllis? No, I'll tell her right now. Mary! Yeah, hey, come in. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Mary? <laughs> Do you have any dental floss? <laughs> Lars won't eat his dinner until he knows he can floss when he finishes. Yeah, I'll get some. Come in. Come on. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Uh, uh. How's tricks? Thanks, Phyllis. <laughs> I want to tell you something. Oh? You remember my mentioning Sharon, don't you? Yes. Well, I saw her this afternoon and we straightened things out. We're going to get married. Oh, Mike, how nice. <laughs> Have you told Mary? Yeah, I just told her. Oh, poor Mary. <laughs> poor, dear, brave, gallant Mary. <laughs> Here's your cloth. Well, uh, look, you know, I better be going. Uh, Mary, Sharon's waiting for me. Okay. So. Well, Mike, I, I just hope that you and Sharon will be as happy in your marriage as Lars is in mine. <laughs> Thanks, and, uh, Mary, I'd just like to say that if it hadn't been for Sharon... Um, well, all I want to say is I think you're terrific. Thanks. Phyllis? Yes, Mike? Phyllis, there are no words to describe you. <laughs> Thank you. But look, maybe someday we'll, we'll all get together. Sure. Someday you and Sharon, Phyllis and I can go dancing. <laughs> so long. Goodbye. Oh, Mary, you poor, dear, sweet, broken-hearted sparrow. <laughs> broken-hearted? Mary, don't try to hide the pain. I know how deeply you cared for Mike. Phil, come on, I told you, Mike and I were just friends, that's all. Mary, don't try to be brave. Come on, you can cry on my shoulder. It's just an inexpensive Selenese Fortrell. Oh. <laughs> Phyllis, <laughs> in your own peculiar way, you really care about me, don't you? Care about you, Mary? Oh. I love you. <laughs> You know, that platonic relationship that Lars and Phyllis and Mike were having? Mm. What do you call that, open marriage? Yeah. Well, maybe that would be a good idea for a documentary. You know, it might be. Huh? No, I don't like it, Lou. Huh? No, I don't go for the idea of married people dating other people on a purely friendly basis. Oh, come on, Murray. Ha hasn't there ever been a woman in your life who was a friend and a companion without any physical contact? Yeah. My wife. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.